Guys, welcome back to another episode of Unmotivated. We're sitting here, and uh, our guys humble the bold, man. This is Parker. We've got Marlon. We've got Better Best Dog on the mics with us today. Now, Yo. for one, hey, is there anything that we should be promoting? Well, go ahead and say your all the avenues, because you know you're back here for your third episode. Your episode, <laughs> people have already told me they listened to a few times. Mm-hmm. It got how many downloads did I get, money? His specifically, I can tell you off the top, but I know it's 30 plus because so, everything's so 30 plus. So guys, let's, let's paint a picture here. And again, I have to keep thanking people for, for listening and downloading. Um, they gave us some, Jamarcus, walk us through exactly what you explained to me the other day in terms of the podcast thing. So if your episodes reaches anywhere from 30 plus downloads in the first seven days, you are now considered in the top 50% of podcasting. When that number starts increasing to 100, then you start hitting 25%. And then 500, 10%. And then once you start hitting 1,000 plus, you're in the top 5%. And then anything beyond that, 1%. There you go, people. So what that, what that means is, for one, we've already had over 500 downloads, to be clear. Mm-hmm. But our average episode download is 30 plus. Mm-hmm. And that, I'm telling you right now, we don't got 20 episodes out. There's no. not 20 episodes available, but in less than a month, literally. We've not, we're still not even at a month when we started this thing. What day did we start? We started December fifteenth. Uh, Ooh, so we're four, 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 four days away, a couple yeah. of days away from being a month on this podcast. And because, again, the people we know sitting down, putting you guys, out, I don't like the word game, but just giving some good information and telling the truth is working. And mm-hmm. the people we're meeting, they're like, "Yo," and I, we got tagged earlier today, and you know, people have been tagging me on the dog page. Yeah, like, look, I'm, I'm dying to hear the next one. Sent it to a buddy of mine in Kansas City who was driving back to Chicago. He goes, bro, I heard the first episode. I'm already fucking hooked. So <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, It's a work in progress, and I think this could uh, this could work. Glad y'all doing it, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Glad I can contribute. <laughs> hey, man, they enjoying the episodes, bro. Yeah. Man, that's that's mm-hmm. a big hey, thing. Real man. quick, this, t- this pillow, is that bothering? Is that in the camera? No, man, that's fine, man. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, okay, cool. Okay. I just don't want it to be like uh, a loose end in the camera, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we all about the details in this house, hey, as you can tell. Details, details. Yeah. The devil's in the details, man. But, you know, what is, go ahead and walk them through all the places they can find you. And, and again, just keep reintroducing yourself, man, and uh, yeah, so sure. they can reach out. I appreciate y'all having me on again. I mean, for me, it's really Instagram, real simple, watch.parker. Um, if you, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, you can find me by my name, Parker Lee. Yeah. Those are really the only avenues where I, I participate pretty regularly. Um, I may get more active on like the YouTubes or yeah. podcasts on my own, but you know, for now, we hang with y'all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Hey, <laughs> and that in itself, people, is a privilege. Now, <laughs> let's let's get to the, the the presence of privilege and privilege <clears throat> and presence. And you know, one thing I do know is you uh, you have a family. We're in your we home. We do. Yeah. Thank um, you for yeah, coming we, to me today. Because yeah. As you could tell when y'all got here, I was on baby duty. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it, I mean, literally, what, a four, you said three or four month old? Yeah, she's uh, just about three, no, just about four months. Four mm-hmm. months old people, and he's still finding the time to share some of his time with, with friends. So I, I think Jamal and I did a, a segment, if you would, on <sighs> cutting dead weight, and even more importantly, how you you choose to to move forward in this life when you're trying to attract higher, higher valued individuals, right? Yeah. So what's one of the things that you look for when you are trying to connect, be it your high value person, um, to other people like minded? Like, and, and I'm saying this, let me make sure I frame this right. There are three black men sitting here, um, and definitely for where I come from, I think where Maul comes from. You got from. excluded. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I, was, I was doing that to you. I was like, I was like, I was like <laughs> does my half not count no more? <laughs> I guess, I guess I he kind of both his half. He got his both his half. It's a three eighths rule. There's three, four black black men here. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose or if it was just some <laughs> quick nap. Yeah. But, hey, kudos, man. That For real. Was that was hey. crazy. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, listen. If you did we about three we were, we were like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo. Jamarcus has got Navajo. We've got a part-time Jew over here. <laughs> no, that was crazy. That but, was, man. But, but, but listen, there are four black men here, and, and you know, every one of us has just a little bit of different upbringing so in my case oh, you know you say you know you get in this environment you don't know how to look to to better in your life right and mm-hmm. nothing around you was better um and let me be very clear in saying this uh, i said this on another podcast my dad i was five years old when they took him away and my papa had to pick me up from the county jail my mom's only worked 
and I do repeat, only worked as a Cracker Barrel person in a data source. Four dollars at one point working at Kinder Care. I could walk you Damn. through the the thing. So there was never an opportunity <laughs> for me to see this brighter future. Mm-hmm. Like in no way, shape, or form. I don't have doctors and lawyers and engineers and thinkers and entrepreneurs and and inventors in my family. That's not the case. I got some people that work their ass off mm-hmm. yeah. uh, just to have nothing, you know. And and you say nothing. And they had what they needed to get through life, right? Yeah. But then you're like, man, I want a little bit more. Yeah. So, yeah. but you'd only get more when you can increase that network a lot of times. So, you know, be it, you know, you get into a space where a guy walk, welcomes us in. Mm-hmm. I think the home's a sacred place, man. Yeah. yeah. I know for a fact people ain't going to be coming to my home. But, but it's a sacred place. And, you know, that invitation, it it really, you know, gets me a lot of times. And I'm like, you know, I, and then I get to bring some other homies with me. Yeah. Um, that everybody, and everybody feels safe, like. A baby, kid, family, like it's it's mm-hmm. it's a lot to be invited in people's homes where I come from at least. Yeah, very so, intimate, man. Yep, definitely. Yeah, so so then if you could park, give us some advice on, you know, potentially finding higher value in individuals to, you know, extend your network. Yeah. So uh and sorry, I had to order food from my, you my boss there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the wife. Yeah. Um, you know, so for, for me, it's always been about putting yourself in position, right? Mm-hmm. So go to the places that that y- you envision those people being, right? So if you're going to specialize in real estate, you should be at real estate conferences, real mm-hmm. estate meetups, right? You should be at investor events, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And not not these conferences where you sit down and they lecture you for an hour, right? We're talking <laughs> about networking events. Mm-hmm. You're talking about maybe, um, maybe builder events, right? Where you know investors are going to go to see the new thing that they should be putting in their houses, right? Yeah. Y- y- Think, think like an investor, act like an investor, right? So if whatever it is that you, and that, that applies to whatever it is that you want to do. The next thing is, is that once you start to put yourself in those environments and make those connections, bring value, <laughs> right? Like mm-hmm. if you have money already, then th- that's pretty clear what your value is, right? If mm-hmm. you're going to be an investor in a situation like myself, it's really clear what my value is, right? Now, secondary value might be things like um, you're a connector, right? You have relationships. You, uh, oh shit. You're good, man. You're good. Yeah. Can y'all get that out? Yeah. No, they're not. They can't (laughs) hear me. They won't be able to hear that. You'd be good. Okay. Cool. All right. Sorry for y'all. My, we in my house, and there's house things happening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um. Uh. So, you know, be valuable, right? If you're a connector, connect people, right? If you're a deal maker, make deals, right? Do that. Um. It's always about bringing the, bringing the value. And if you don't have any of those things, right? So, so as an example, when I was starting out my career and I was looking at, you know, I was getting, going to these places with high net worth individuals or high value individuals, mm-hmm. and I wanted to reestablish myself as the same, what can I take off your plate? Like what things, what yeah. tasks Almost that are like super small? Almost like volunteer stuff, huh? Dude, yeah. oh yeah, for sure. I'll never forget. So I worked with this um, broker in Naples, Florida, mm-hmm. right? So I was at school, undergrad. And his name was Larry Rorda. And I hope that one day he hears this shit. I didn't like this fool at all, as it came to be. Yeah. But I learned how, like, the work product, I learned the frequency, a lot of things from him. So he, I, brought, I brought him value because I took a lot of stuff off of his plate, right? And he brought me value because I learned some, some of who I didn't want to be, right? I, <laughs> I learned about how I didn't want to be. But I also learned a lot about how to operate at a level that get you the results that you need, mm-hmm. right? He was a, this dude was a hustler. Yeah. He was yeah. busting his hump in a community that quite frankly, it was a, it's a small community. You know, you live and die by every single transaction. Like, you know, you're, yeah. you're making bigger transactions because of the the dollar mm-hmm. dollar amounts. I mean, average house in, in that area at the time was probably like $2 million. And this is 10 plus years ago. Right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And so this is pre inflation, pre COVID, pre all these, you know, mortgage crisis type deals. Like this is, this is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, short answer is like, um, be valuable. And that comes in a lot of different forms. So get creative with the ways that you bring value. So that means you got to know humility in in a sense. I don't like the word humble, but you got to like, you know, like, yo, my man, you're not him yet. I met met grown men who's like, man, I want to be the guy. I'm like, but nobody knows who you are, and you're not that smart. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know, when smart. I say smart, smart means like you know when to fall back, 
so that yeah. you can really, I yep. went, believe it or not, photography wise, I tell the story. Mm -hmm. I went to go change Michael Miller's batteries at weddings just so I could see how he was shooting. And then he'd give me the camera, hey, you could use this one, take some pictures, and I'll tell you how to get better with it. And I learned photography. And it, the most annoying thing happened because I was trying to do these National Geographic shots. And uh, I said, Mickey, I can't figure out this fucking light. He drives all the way to this gym, moves it, just literally, he just moves it to the <laughs> left. He said, just do like this. And takes the photo. And I go, what the fuck? <laughs> but but that's, that's, why, awesome. that's, who, that's why he's who he is. And that's why I'm, you know, the student at the time. And now... You know, I've passed those if information on to, to Jamarcus as yeah. he practices and he's leveraged those skills. But, I mean, literally, I'm keeping batteries in my pocket, following around while he's shooting first looks and all this yeah. stuff that goes on pre-wedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, just like, I'm watching like, yo, man, what are you doing? What's a good camera? How did you do this? What would you do? Would you take this down to ISO aperture shit like that? So big believer <clears throat> in the, the definitely knowing your space and then knowing how to grow. But then identifying, too, because I know people have yeah. identity. identity yeah. Crises at times mm -hmm. yeah for sure and mind you in those moments too you're gonna feel like you're doing bitch work even travis said it to me at times <laughs> and honestly i don't even feel that because of the, the opportunities it lends i get to learn from people like maul people like parker i get to meet all these individuals yeah. and to be in these rooms just from doing from holding the camera being able to set up the podcast or doing the websites or managing operations doing all the stuff behind the scenes to make their lives easier so that we can keep this show mov moving it's priceless. And you're in a better position, though, too. I sure am, too. Yeah. Trust me. I sure am. And I will say that proudly. There you go. I don't, I don't no, think it's necessarily bitch work, because you could take it to the part when, you know, back in the day, and I know, you know, Puffy's damn near canceled, but, you know, Cheesecake factories. you know what I'm saying? Canceled. Like, those little errands were... Uh, <laughs> Puffy's canceled. He's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. you were about to say uh, how, how you used to send them to go get cheesecake. Yeah, but yeah, uh, he's definitely crazy. canceled, but, you know, I'll try to be nice. But, uh, Do I get my card back for that I I knew that reference. What? Oh, you oh, yeah, card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's I don't think it's considered bitch work, bro. It's just yeah, you know, it's like you said, humility, man, and it's just uh, you know, you got to learn the ropes, and those things are designed to kind of make you tougher in yeah. certain situations, so you can understand what's going on and what you're trying to get to. So, yeah. for sure, if I if I could add to that, you know, yeah. one thing that I I think is really important is. You know, we're not all going to be successful, right? <laughs> like, we'd like to believe that we are. And everybody behind the camera that, like, you know, that is watching, look, you guys got to face a stark reality that some of y'all are not going to be successful. Yeah. I hate to be that that bearer, right? That's the fact, yeah. But, That's the truth, though. But yeah. you know what? The it, It's when you stop. It's when you stop trying. Yeah. And it, it's also when you start having an attitude about things. Like, mm. the, the cheesecake is a perfect example or... Um, you know, anything else that you look at is menial. And my, one of my businesses, um, about a couple, a couple years ago, when I was getting it started, uh, it was actually when I first started flipping real estate, mm -hmm. when I was getting it started, I got this office and, um, it was too small for any cleaners to want to come to the office. So I had to clean the office, mm -hmm. right? I, who am I to not clean my, our office? Yeah. Right. And, and I think about that. It's like, Anybody else is just going to let the office be a, be dirty or ask their employees to, to do it. Uh -huh. I could have very well done that. I could have. But you know what? It's just like one of those things for me that I'm like checked in. This is a part of how we are all going to stay successful because if, if you know, nobody else wants to do it, why? I'll do it. I'll do yeah. everything from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. I'll close the deals. I'll get the deals. I'll scrub the toilets out this mother. Mm -hmm. Stop yeah. playing yeah. with me. So anyway, <laughs> you, I, I say that as, as like those are the people that will actually carry the torch and find the ways to be successful because they don't look at any two tasks as too small for them or not meaningful enough. Yeah. 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 Everything counts. Mm -hmm. Every it, last rep. They got to yeah. get done. Just like yeah. Tree was saying in one of the first episodes or the third one, he was like, yo, I, I got to be the janitor. I got to go scrub the toilets. I got to go fucking yep. vacuum, yeah. dust, bu fucking whatever. You know, I got to mm -hmm. get it done. Yeah. You know, Hand out flyers, yeah. just like even Colton was saying. He's the at Walmart handing out his own flyers. His, his family trying yeah. to figure out how he was able to grow that thing so set, but he was bruh, on a mission. On man. a mission, mission man. man. On a mission. So in this case, too, because again, everybody here is trying to extend their network by $10 million. And you just say, okay, so how do you get to a $10 million person? Well, has anyone ever had a $10 million idea? And then are they executioners, per yes. se, because you need it? <laughs> he definitely has <laughs> had a couple of them. <laughs> can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes our life easy, you know, and I know Maul has high-level, um, you know, access to people as well. So, you know, if you don't mind Maul and, you know, Jamarcus too, you know, what are some things you guys did or – let me re let me re re restate this. 
you guys were probably uncomfortable the first time you got around people who were worth more. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Very much always, so. Always. And and so what was the thing? How long did it take for you to get out of your own head when it comes to being like, because these guys, I've been around a few of Maul's people, and mind you, um, I think the first time Craig came over, I was cooking. So after I get done cooking, I get done. I said, hey, look, sorry, man, I was focused. I said, I go around the thing and I shake his hand. I said, so how do you know this guy? He's not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm giving Jamal a hard time, but clearly he's smart enough for this very wealthy person to show up. But I've been around wealth and, and things for so long, it don't move fast, you know? Yeah. So even like I'm like, I'm cooking, making people food. Hey, Craig, you want some food? Perfect. Well, I got to finish this and then we'll, we'll talk. But but I know what it also feels like to feel less than yeah. because you literally don't know what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're throwing stuff out, words and shit you ain't never heard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember the first time I think I told you guys, Dan asked me, he said, Trevor, could you write up your accolades? I'm like, man, what are you talking about? Yeah. He was like, degrees, certification. I said, man, I don't got none of that stuff. He says, well, how do you know all these things? I said, I read everything. Yeah. He said, what do you mean? I read everything. <laughs> He goes, I said, PhD, anatomy books. I read everything, man. I literally sat at a dude's table for eight hours and read every book possible. And I analyzed them. Okay, this one says this. And I broke it all down. And I was, and I remember getting tired saying, wake up. You got to finish. Yeah. Nobody mm-hmm. was at this dude's house but me. Yeah. But point is, what are some things that you guys maybe did to overcome? Because now you know you're on the right path. And you can't walk into any other room ever again feeling less than. I mean, kind of what you just said broke it down, right? And, mm-hmm. um... Uh, what Craig did a great job was he just told me to just slow down, bro, and kind of to piggyback off of what Parker said, just try to add value, try to see what you can take off the plate, and just <laughs> mm-hmm. just don't get overwhelmed, get in your head. It's real simplified. Simplify the process. What needs to be done? What level are you at? How could you help add to the situation? Yep. And those kind of, those tasks, uh, also with the Nolans and, you know, different people like that, that's where I kind of, I realized, you know, you leveled the playing field. Yeah, you leveled yeah. the playing field. You know, yeah. some like he said, some people are never going to be like super successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you do things in increments, you learn how to what invest properly, save properly, and those things could get you to where you're trying to go. Yeah. But you have to be in a level to be able to understand that. And that's where pride and ego and fucking comprehension <laughs> yeah. and common sense come in part, right? <laughs> the hardest <laughs> definitely you see what I'm saying? starting but is it's, the hardest. It's a yeah. it's a lot, bro. But yeah. like for the most part, for me, how I was able to able to kind of transition that from yeah. Uh, being in a place to where, you know, you're playing and you're doing all this kind of stuff, these things kind of come at you, but, you know, you're never in a good space to kind of understand what's going on. Slow down, kind of take yourself out, you know, reassess the situation and just like, okay, cool. I could simplify my process by, you know, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And just, you should be fortunate enough to have the type of people like the Craigs and the Nolans and, you know, Parkers and people like the, the, the you know, fucking Everybody. riches that, Everyone, yeah. you know, they don't, they're going to apply a lot of pressure, but Man, you just man. have to be steadfast and just understand what the goal is and yep. what's trying to get done. And you'd be surprised how many things could change. Like I told you, mm-hmm. I'm over here riding with a oh, dude that's about to get his own store. You yeah. know what I'm saying? His whole floor plan. I'm like, how the hell did this happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. I just listened to him talk about time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And he's like, come rob ro- me. And he invited me with him today again. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just, you know, being a, a people person and also just having a certain level of comprehension and not putting too, too much on yourself, on your plate, you know, to try to be able to assess things properly and get it done and getting out your head because yeah. you're not going to know everything. And yeah. if you're trying to get to, you know, $100 million, $2 million, whatever, you have to understand, especially if you never had it before or got it in a way where you're not used to, someone's always going to be better than you and going <laughs> to have the different type of blueprint. So if that's what you want to do, you got to walk that walk, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of that walk comes from just being able to kind of Turn the man ego down. <laughs> Definitely. And just, just being present in what's being taught. Max. Definitely. It's yeah. so interesting because, you know, like, we all <clears throat> struggle with it at times. I think we talked about it a little bit in yeah. that last episode, right? But, yeah, if you if you come into things with your ego out of whack, man, it's like you, you said you're already ready to fail. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, you already are. You're already a loser, dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. just know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think, you know, I use, I bring up the Bible a lot of times. People, I'm not a religious person, but it, <laughs> it's the best saying because whenever I've seen someone egotistically lean into pride, the Bible says pride comes right before you fail. And you go, every time you've seen it, you know, even if something as simple as the process, we're going to win more champions than anybody when he went to, the, you know, Miami Heat. And I'm not even yeah. a basketball fan. 
I said, that ain't going to work. He should have never said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't watch one game, but I knew that wasn't going to happen because we leaned into pride versus the work. Oh, my God. And mm-hmm. the people who people respect the most, you respect the statistics, but you respect Jordan's love for the game. And you don't hear them talk about anything outside of he would terrorize you. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like this, do not say that to Jordan. Boy, you know you know what you just did? <laughs> you, know, you, you about to look, man. Or even Kobe like Kobe. Yeah. 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 Same Kobe thing. Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when they say failure is not an option, okay, for the people that are not operating on a high frequency, you're taking that failure and you're like, fuck, I fucked up. No, it's like, okay, that's a lesson. Now, exactly. what level are you at with yourself to understand that this was a lesson? This happened because of this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. Let me sure. go back to the drawing board, you know, and reassess these situations to be like, oh, okay, I missed that when that was delivered. Or I should have looked at it like this instead of being in my head. Or, you know, the message, I'm I'm focused on the tone of the message instead of the message. You know what <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's just a, a lot of fucking to factors, the best bro. That look, that oh, get, yeah. That really get a nigga in his feelings. Yep. A nigga be like this. Man, he shouldn't have said it that way. I'm like, bro, you better calm down. Yep, I've been you know there. Yeah. I've been there. You know Jeez. what I'm saying, bro? So, oh, yeah. And then, like, we spoke about it's always, and then there's, like, mentors to mentors to mentors. Mm-hmm. There's levels Every to all of this shit. Every mentor got a mentor. So, That's the crazy part. Yep. Yeah, bro. The richest of the rich got somebody that they that call to talk to. they're learning from. Yep. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, man, it's just... Mm-hmm. I, like you said, man, uh, the, one of the episodes you did talking about mental health, bro, if your fucking mental capacity is just not somewhere where it needs to be, where you <laughs> could just be able to kind of somewhat level-headed in your thought process, bro, and that comes down to your environment, what you're taking in, fucking synergy, fucking what's being pulled from you, who's pulling from you. Man, all of those things play a, pact- a factor because you got people giving you information and their input on things that they never were successful for. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And just watching what you're going through and instead of just figuring out how to just give a neutral message in a sense, it just comes mad fucking negative. You know yeah. what I mean? So now mm-hmm. you got that shit pouring into your thought process and you yeah. trying to figure out yeah. your venture. So it's, man, look, kudos, man. Kudos yeah. <laughs> There's one thing that um, stood out in, in you said it, um, you said something that, tr- that reminded me. It's like, you know, early on when you're meeting people, you also can't, you can't see them as like an opportunity to get ahead either. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, and you alluded to that. And, and so I, I agree. It's like, you gotta, you have to see them as an opportunity to learn yeah. and then you get yourself ahead. Yeah. Yes. You know, some people are like, Oh, I met somebody with all this money. I hit a lick. Yeah. You know, it's like, Hey man, oh, no, they oh, got no. money. Shut you up. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. No, Facts. we met some people that Facts. are like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like Cat Williams said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I Bro, also, if I could dub his voice over, oh, man, I would live life like that. <laughs> he's, he's my spirit animal right now. Oh man, that's funny, bro. But I mean, I would also say, man, and all that, it definitely comes back down to also keeping an open mind when you're walking in these rooms, especially if you can't add that type of value. Also, you don't know what you don't know, so don't try to act like you know. That's Ooh, one thing I yeah. know. I'm definitely taking the time when I'm walking in these rooms with Trev at times. I'm falling back, and I'm just trying to learn. Yeah. That's it. I'm here to learn, and I know at some point I'm like, yo, now this is a new, at least a new reference or resource. I can at least ask a question. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, I know if I got a question about credit or finances, whatever, I can hit them all up now and stuff like that. Anytime yeah. I'm like, yo, I've been working on for you on this website. What does this mean exactly? Yeah. You know, or you know, if I have questions now about operations, I know a man uh, Parker here is an operations fanatic. I can hit him up. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. You and you're in these rooms. You got to keep an open mind and know that you don't know what you don't know, and you got to fall back and just be ready to learn. And that's it. What you, what you what you guys will see over the next you know I'd say five years too is Jamarcus will slow down <laughs> he's like he, Ed said man every time you talk it's like you're selling something bro I'm just excited uh, yeah no, <laughs> I know keep that energy though that yeah. passion is so good for you you know like and, and I can see the natural curiosity which for me, uh, for me <laughs> Scooby Doo nigga yeah it's but it's good though you know like it's it'll um I say this about uh one of my boys you know his superpower is cur- his curiosity mm. right so I think ask all, good questions then um, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't say the always good question, but you know, what do you expect from a ten year old, right? You know, yeah. you know so oh, you literally mean your son? Yeah, yeah, one of my oh. kids. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's his superpower because I, but I know as he sophisticates and he develops, it will be something that he uses to like to get to know people, to attain knowledge that mm-hmm. maybe not everybody would get, um, and and not only that, but he's persistent about it. So. I, I know he tells you he, you're going to slow it down. I mm-hmm. tell you to keep it going. Yeah. Because, okay. because at the end of the day, if once you stop, the progress stops or it becomes a lot harder. Like mm-hmm. I know for me, like I 
in a way turn that off based on like some of the walls that I faced and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to, I have to manually turn it on for him. It's (laughs) almost natural. Like questions ooze out of his eyeballs, man. It's like, we're sometimes like, man, you already know the sky is blue. Like, why do I need to tell you why it's blue? (laughs) Oh my God. That's Michael, bro. (laughs) Stop it. And so, um, so Mm -hmm. the adult version of that is, you know, probably a lot where you are finding this natural need to like, to build a repository of answers to these mm-hmm. maybe somewhat esoteric questions, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's the second time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's good. It's, it's honestly, keep it going, you know? That's Stan's word. That, man. Stan, esoteric. Stan, Stan esoteric, yeah. esoteric, yeah. esoteric, he does. I said, Stan, I know you got that from Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I know no. you ain't read, not you, now you no. know the you know the word. Stan on the other side, I know you ain't read nothing with that anybody. <laughs> Bless your heart. So let me guess, guys. Actually, let me let me ask you this, right? So, I've gotten a couple of debates about this, uh, about the word opportunist, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like there is a such thing as a good opportunist, right? And some people think that being being an opportunist is a bad thing. And I'm like, man, look, if you're making platonic relationships and it's genuine, you know, opportunities come forth on how you can learn and grow. Yeah. But if I'm going in there, like you said earlier, like, oh, shit, man, like, oh, yeah, I done read on Forbes, this, this motherfucker's worth $100 million, right? Mm-hmm. And everything is like when Jay-Z said why well, he don't like to go to family because they just throwing shit at the wall to see if it sticks. I'll mm-hmm. well, see mm-hmm. if they can shake you down. You know but that's, you, you, you're answering your own question because it is literally based on the opportunity. And I'm telling you right now, I told you, the first investor ever gave me a $25,000 check and then gave me $8,000 every I'm walking out of his house. And I'd been pouring into his kid. Yeah. And he says, man, I found you an investor. He says, when I, I'll see you Sunday, um, come by. Yeah. And I was like, man, who'd you get? He's like, Here's a, he gave me a check. <laughs> and and, and, and it, was, it was not the opportunity. I was like, he's like, Trevor, you ever need to raise any money? I said, you know, I do need a car. I didn't have a car at the time. So he goes, man, you do get places. And you're always on time. <laughs> he said, you That's gotta, funny. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so Being punctual helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and I was, and again, I was, I was there with his son, Mason. And he just said, man, I found you an investor, man. I really like that T fit thing. It's working. Um, he said, but we'll talk. And so he gave me a check to go buy a car. Then told me to call Bob Hewlett back home, mm-hmm. and he'll take care and make sure I get the car. Yeah. And guess what? Bob lived right across the street, so Bob <laughs> Allen Ford. This, I mean, this been uh, this been on Jamar Sedan. Oh yeah, Bob Allen Ford. Forty years Ford, of bro. commercials with this guy. Oh yeah. So yeah. when you're looking at the opportunity, to go the opportunity for me, and I think for all of us in here is the work. Yeah. Can I can I learn from being in this space, and can I say yes yeah. to a few more things and see what happens? But I've never looked at an opportunity, even like sitting down here with Parker. Mm-hmm. We know for a fact he's he's alluded to. Hey, I want to invest ten such and such. I want I want to buy ten more homes. Jamal knows how to find homes. Uh, we've got three or four businesses we're about to build, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it's still not the time. You know, it's like one of those things. We'll we'll, we'll get there, and and I know five more other people. Even when you saw Colton, I mm-hmm. said, Colton, can you Shit. believe this doctor said we just need one hundred fifty thousand dollars to do this CVS for dogs? Yeah, Man. he's yeah, like, yeah. what? Yeah, he's like, like, Trev, just tell me where to put the fucking money. We just yeah, raised four million. Yeah. My mm-hmm. average network of individuals has a network, and there, you know why it works. Like if you heard Colton's episode as well, it's because everybody does work. Mm-hmm. Yes, Man, you're definitely right. That's shit, shit, I humble myself. Right? <laughs> but first, I, I told you I went to no one's office, right? And yeah. he was like, "Yo, I'm, I think I'm a deep dive back into real estate, bro. This is what I'm looking for." I'm like, "Well, shit, why well, go against the grain?" You know uh-huh. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like the fourth person in my circle, or now in my circle looking for fucking real estate. Yep. You know what I mean? So I'm like, shit. I asked you, Marcus. I'm like, okay, well, you know, shit. This is, you, you've you had some success with this. Yeah. How do I identify? And then after that, you know what I mean? I'm like, shit, let me reach out to Parker. Yeah. Parker, Parker yep. told me exactly what he's looking for. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, just generally trying to connect dots because everybody trying to figure shit out. And I'm yeah. going to take, take a page out of Gilly's book right here, right? <laughs> he's like, yo, look. Hey, young nigga. All right. <laughs> A dummy, a, you could be a CEO dummy. A dummy can make a million dollars if you fucking paying attention, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it is. It's kind of fucking true, you know. Yeah. No, it is true. Complete, just, just, just keep completion it simple. is seventy percent of your grades in school. Like, yeah, my nigga, you got all F's. You didn't even turn in the homework, bro. Bro, if you just turn in the homework and book, they because a lot of times it's come by. Oh, it's done. Hey, can you? What's up, sweetie? Oh, it should be. Yeah, they're approaching <laughs> with the food. Yeah, no, you're right. It's uh, it's uh, it, or or they give you the opportunity to correct your work, 
you you uh, this that is, part. This is a thing, you know, like this is why I say it's so important to start because if you start, you have an opportunity to fix your mistakes. Yes, if you yes, never sir. start, you yes, never sir. know where you're going to fail. You never know where you're going to succeed. You never know what you can fix, what you can't fix, and none of that. So it's like, Ooh. it's like they, I think a school should do this more, actually, um, that for those of, for those who still believe in school, <laughs> that it should, you should have the opportunity to, to correct your work because you get the opportunity to do that in real life. I mean, there's not very yeah. often that your mathematics is the difference between life and death, unless you're a doctor, obviously, <laughs> right? Clearly. You know, yeah. or your, your calculations are, are the difference. But like, you know, in the instances where it, it is meaningful, like in business or in in a lot of other settings, like, hey, man, you know, if you don't start, you will never, ever, ever get a shot to succeed. Yeah. Or in this case too, I think just learn something about yourself. Yeah. You think about where, you know, we talked off camera just about where each child in terms of your journey has led you mentally, yeah, right? For sure. Same thing with myself, you know, my again, knowing some of the people I've known, I'm known now five, six, ten years and think about where we're all right now. Where we're at right now is in a place I think of peace where collectively if we had to bring something to someone and say, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this done, I've got ten years of he don't fuck up. So yeah. we're gonna be straight. And this is working, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 double down and really support growth collectively. But having that rationale and ability to reason comes from making choices that may have cost you a lot. Sometimes cost you nothing, or even one point. Maybe you just sit back and learn from idiots. You say, "Ooh, I don't want to do that." And you've got to take the good with the bad mm -hmm. and everything in life. So <laughs> <laughs> I know you were leaning to. Was there a question you was going to ask them all about just? How to diversify, or, you know, differentiate in a sense, looking at things from a positive versus a negative. Opportunities. Opportunity wise. You just see his face right now, be like, what is this nigga talking about? <laughs> it's called a brain fart. Don't worry, man. Yeah, no, you know what? Well, no, I, had, you I, had some feedback. I had some feedback on what he was saying, though. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think that there is a such thing as a good opportunist, and it comes with discretion. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, so, like, that person who sees every person that they every time that they meet someone new is like oh i can make some money or i can do this but that is people. that's low discretion mm -hmm. low uh, yeah desperate it's it gives desperate right mm -hmm. um but the person who can say all right well i'm going to make i'm going to build mutual relationships that we both give and take value right um but that but there's not it's not constant mm -hmm. right where you're not always like, oh man, I need something from you, or oh, they always need something from me. Like I had a, um, I had a, a gym partner that I was like this with, and uh, it was it was it was kind of an odd relationship because he's much <laughs> older. You, you remember this guy? Did you remember meet Perry? No, I don't think I met Perry. Okay, I might have uh, saw him one time. You had a one guy with you one time at Azu's gym. Older dude. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. could have been him because it wasn't. It was everybody thought this was my dad, right? He <laughs> he was a banker, and um, and honestly, like we maintained a, a relationship for many years. And it was, and the only thing I ever needed from him is like, can you help me set up so I could buy my truck easier, right? Like literally, that was it. One thing, <clears throat> and you know, I gave him tons of value. So I taught him how to wholesale real estate. I taught him how to do uh, a handful of other things. I helped him a lot in the gym, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that was that was my value. So so there's instances where someone, and definitely he, I probably could have exploited him for a lot of opportunities, <laughs> yeah. you know, but. <laughs> But I didn't. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, you know, their short answer is yes, yeah. there is. But, good that, but that goes back to also, I think, you knowing kind of what you need and being on the right path kind of sets you up for that place of peace where he's not getting you like, hey, you know what? I enjoyed this guy in the gym. I enjoyed learning a little bit about banking. Matter of fact, he said something about to see how far he wants to take it. Oh, did you know you could do this with the real estate? But I, I think some of that stuff is rooted in your, your character. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. 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 But I think that, that goes to, for everybody, right? Like, you know, so the I short mean, answer is some blood suckers, bro. That's what he does. There is. Oh, Lord, yeah, look, hey, roaches, nigga. Here's the thing. Can't kill them neither. They just keep coming back. You, here's the thing, right? Like I think I think that that behavior is ingrained depending on on the environment you're raised in, right? Oh. A lot of people mm. in in low income or impoverished environments or any even highly let's not even take let's take the money out of it. Just competitive environments, right? Yeah. They feel like they have to grab at everything that crosses their their desk, mm -hmm. right? So like, uh, do y'all any of y'all have brothers? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's like when y'all when y'all were going to eat, you if you didn't get your food first, you might not get food. Oh man, snatching. You know? 
you know what I'm saying? So there's some people who carry that mentality throughout all life, you know, so they, they just grab every opportunity and maybe they're selfish with the opportunity. So they don't think about others like, oh, well, I'm not a real estate, but I know this real estate guy. I'm not telling everybody else about it, yeah. you know, mm. or they're like, okay, well, I am in real estate. And even though there's not an opportunity to work together with this guy, I'm going to try to force the issue. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. and so those we are people that are like, yeah, yeah, those are people who are just bad opportunities. Or you just have like the bad people who are like thieves, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show up this person. Robert yeah. Barron. Yeah. Damn. yeah. Like, Robert what are you, Barons. goddamn, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Goes, uh, Bonnie and Clyde type shit. Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> but yeah, like, so short answer, like, a, a lot of words, but short answer is yes. There's definitely good opportunities. I think it comes with the discretion and, and the ability to um, reserve some of your own self needs mm -hmm. so that there is preservation of the res of the relationship. Yeah. Right? So, so same, let's, same let, thing Craig said. Let's, let's lean into this and kind of like, I see this episode's turned into almost a, um, a value episode like a value standpoint so uh everybody can can basically talk a little about what are the things they look for in terms of value when trying to build something out or build better values in yourself and let me make sure i make this make sense for me uh, i've always said i could scale character before i could scale a business mm -hmm. and if i find the right people i can turn this whole thing into because i could teach you how to do a lot of stuff or put you in rooms with people that can teach you how to solve a lot of my problems mm -hmm. and build you from there but if you've got if you lack We'll just say integrity and integrity <clears throat> people, you know, it's also being able to deal with the punishment side of things too. Mm -hmm. not everything works and, and we might fail and everybody got to be held accountable. And you heard that last clip Parker talked about, it was like, yo, get, get used to that accountability thing mm -hmm. because if we can't be accountable going back to growing in terms of character, we can't grow. Absolutely. And if you don't ever think you made a mistake, but that mistake costs us 10,000, $5,500 and we don't know how to solve it. Oh, it's, it'll be fine. We, we we got some more money, bro. It don't work that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're we're trying to save a, a half of a penny if we can. When you really get into building big businesses, so man. <laughs> so so when you look at at values and character and and you know how you align with with people, what are some things you know you look for, Parker? You could start and you know in terms of people you work with, and again, even allowing us to come into your your house. What were the things you were assessing? Like you know, these are some decent guys. I fuck with them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, fair enough, right? <laughs> uh, I will say that I am, um, I operate on when it comes to character based on gut, yeah, right? Uh, you know, I think that there are some people that are maybe a little bit better at character development or character an analysis than I am in that sense, um, just to see, like, oh, well, you know, this person is a bad person, right? Mm -hmm. I can see, I can sense like, oh, I don't like this or it doesn't make me feel good yeah. really, really well. And I'm quick to make decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there are people that I have meet one time and and maybe in, like I know that they float around in my sphere, but they will not see me again. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All very much on purpose. Um, you know, I, I would say that uh, and she's not sitting here right now, but Desiree, my wife, is really good when it comes to the, the analysis mm. of people. She can like break it down. She'd be like, yes, this person is not shit for these reasons, and you need to stay away. I think that's a woman thing, bro. Bro, maybe Man. so. She's a pro. She, mm -hmm. she, yeah, when we meet people together, she'd be like, yeah, don't do not do that again. Yeah, like, what, can yeah. you tell me why? She's like, here's all the reasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Wow. Yeah, no, for well, sure. Thank you. I agree so, with you. Thank you very all. much. Uh, but as far as what I look for <clears throat> value-wise, um, it, it really just, do you, do you have something that you're passionate about? That's what I'm looking for now, right? Are you, um, you know, because I can go find my own stuff, man. Like, honestly, like, I don't I don't have any need from any particular person, <laughs> you know? And and not to say that, like, I just have it. I don't, I don't have it all, but, like, what will be, what's mine will come to me. It's it's inevitable. So, yeah. um, in the sense of, like, what do I look for in people? I just be genuine, you know? Yeah. Strong, strong, honest characters, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Uh, care about the things that you are important to you and show people that, right? So don't, yeah. I really, it really is a flag to listen, me listen. when people tell me this is important and then they don't, they Man, can't show me why. I why? got to, so I got to lean into that before we go to others because uh, I'm talking to someone the other day and they're they're saying social media is bad, everybody's always on their phone, such and such, right? And part of, you guys know me, I lean into everything, I just share everything, I don't give a shit. And, and the more admiration grows because they trust me now. They're like, yo, this dude's not hiding nothing. 
But while this person was complaining about being on social media, they live on YouTube. So I said, you you had a two hour conversation about somebody for nothing that could have been leveraged, and you watch YouTube for two hours. You know how much money oh, that fucking video had three hundred thousand views. I said, and you watch for two hours. I said, do you know how much? I said, now mind you, just your perspective. Of, I said, like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. I said, you deem things bad before you keep an open mind and look into them. Mm. So when he's talking about that, that sharing that moment or that experience, there are more viewers than doers. Mm. And that goes back to him also yeah. saying, hey, not everybody's going to be successful. The people that I've met that lack success is because they lack expressing exposure. And exposing means, think about all the shit, Elon, shit, even, you know, God bless Kanye West, the things that these guys say and do, but they're like, you can hate them or love them. Or dislike them, but they're not missing a beat with sharing you, sharing yeah. with you views, values, disagree or disagree, speaking their mind. And Joe Rogan, uh, I think fucking Dana Dana White, the dude mm-hmm. who wants to see that motherfucker does the same. But like, look, I don't fucking give a shit with any of you fucking thing. I voted for such and such. Kiss my ass. We don't discuss that such and such. Yeah, I did. You go, damn. And he <laughs> lost two dollars. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you know, you go, oh, and people are like, oh, I could never. Or you could never live your life. Mm. That's why you'll never be successful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be genuine for sure. I mean, like that's what, that's what I look for. And then uh, again, stand on stand on your on your business. You know, if you believe yeah. in something or you really love something, you need to be doing that. Like if you aren't doing that, then like you're kind of a loser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and I don't mean you know like you have to be full tilt. Like you don't need to be the best at it, but you have to be. Taking a shot. Like, if you love dogs and you got yeah. cats, bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's happening right oh, now? Oh, when you get a cat, I'm going to build a business. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to learn them love the motherfucking motherfuckers. <laughs> but you get it, right? You got to get the bully yeah. cat. And, and that's... A bully awesome. cat? What the hell hey, is that? Hey, that it's a real <laughs> thing. It's a real <laughs> thing. Is it really? It yeah. is. Seriously. No, seriously, hey. it is. My, you know, that's what's cunning is, is a guy reached out. Shout out to my guy, Mike. Mike, if you see this man or you listen to this podcast... Mike, man, him and I get on that phone for a good four. He down in Florida, and he said, uh, you know, Trev, I believe that authenticity will hold us weight in gold in the future because of the world we live in. And, you know, my boy Rich, he's another one like, bro, you just, people fuck with you. It's, just, it's, 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 got, it's authentic as fuck. It just, it's just the truth, right? Mm-hmm. So when we're looking at, again, just values and scaling and connecting and character, character development, where we're at today, where we're going to land, what are some things that you guys look for? Um, for me, I mean, to lean on some of what, what uh, Parker was saying, you know, even about being genuine, being honest and standing by what it is that you believe. Like for me, someone who's purely like just the truth, for instance, yeah. Trev has always been a hundred percent upfront and honest with me in everything. And yeah, some of the things I might not like what he says, but it's the truth. And I can yeah. live with that at least because at least we know where we stand. You like to know where you like where people think you are and exactly. where people <laughs> yeah, where you where they are too. It's exactly. Yeah. I think that's the big one for me personally. Yeah. What about you, Maul? Man, um man, life is like a roller coaster, man. <laughs> so like I said, you could be at a lot of different stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately for me, like um getting into it, um, I was just you would get a lot of energy at once. And yeah. it's kind of hard to kind of like really depict what's going on because so much stuff is being thrown at you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, fast forward and just being able, I really got, when things slowed down, it was with a lot of older people, if that made any sense. Yeah. The older gentleman, like mm-hmm. really was able to just sit me down and be like, hey, look, 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 look here, young blood, this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized, uh, you know, as I grew older, man, I always wanted to, the chill, the family vibes, and those are some of the morals and values I look for in like when I'm talking to people mm-hmm. or, or you know, men or just like how they handle business. And um, you know, when you're in a fast paced life, you don't really get to see what's going on in the back end with a lot of people. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh sometimes you get in you get into some deals, you get into some business with fucking just bullshit ass people, man. So like with me right now, one of my values is like high value, just characteristic, you know, morals, what they stand for, um, what are they trying to build and like uh, what are they trying to leave behind. And I think, you know, especially having a kid and trying to figure out who I wanted to become, I knew that, uh, you know, my son didn't ask to be in his life. Yeah. So I just really just watch how people move when it comes to their kids. what they're trying to, you got no, have no kids, but like what their idea of what the life they want for themselves. Okay. You kind of mm-hmm. can kind of break that down. If something was to happen unexpected, like a child, just based on their morals, how they move. Okay. And man, this person's heavy invested in making sure they always have more than what they spend and shit like yeah. that, man. So it's like, I had to take a lot of those, 
those characteristics and, um, you know, just, just pretty much just watch how people broke down their everyday aspects of their life and be like, okay, that could be somebody I want to, you know, I want to learn from, I want to grow with, you know what I mean? Or yeah. any, And I made that kind of my mission to be able to get in certain kind of rooms just yeah. based on how I knew people were moving, like, on a personal, you know what I'm saying? And that's what kind of attracted me to, you know, me want to try to build a, some type of relationship around those folks. Yeah, yeah man. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, but I also uh, the other thing even like uh, Parker was saying you know, energy man energy is everything yeah, energy is everything and uh, you know that's something I've definitely learned even with the dogs because the dogs will tell you straight up you know when someone's good or bad basically if really? they walk in your presence oh yeah they can sense they can sense that stuff man so <clears throat> you know I think yeah energy is everything because I'm a big energy person too yeah. and if I can if I were going to and I just feel the energy is even somewhat off even just if it's coming from one specific person I'll know, just like you said, I'll have that gut instinct almost. Yeah. And you'll know in that moment. Man, energy I'll be causes out of here. a lot of confusion, uh, man, because, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, depending on what level you at, like, you know, we were saying earlier, <clears throat> shit, you could be at a low, operating at a low frequency on a horrible environment, and you could mm-hmm. be just like, you could see a quota, and you could be making that quota, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you, you won't know that shit is kind of tearing you apart because you're just consumed in what's going on, and, you know. Yeah. It's a lot of transitions. I know a lot of dirtbags making a whole bunch of fucking money. Man, you know what I mean? It's like, shit, but do you feel good about yourself being a dirtbag? Yeah. Do you have a kid that's going to school and motherfuckers know where your kid go to school at? I can't, you know, look, I got too much shit going on, bro, you know, so. Yeah. It just, it, it just, I just can't understand, but it's not meant for me to understand because I'm not operating on that level, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that, for sure. As a uh, former dirtbag, <laughs> I fully understand, bro. We, hey, we all were there at one point. For real. Oh yeah, all were there, bro. So, oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Man, that's too yeah, much so pressure. That's a whole other yeah. life, right there. It is. It's hard though. You know what? Um, I was talking. Uh, who was I talking? About? It doesn't matter. But it's true. You know, when you're doing things, even if you're just twenty percent off, mm-hmm. off base, right? Like, and, and you're just not being genuine about it, or you're not, um, you're not doing the right things. Yeah. It it has a butterfly effect. All throughout everything until you oh correct God, it, bro. <laughs> until you correct it. So yeah, I mean, you may have your money, right? But, but your personal life would be in shambles. Know what you did wrong when something goes oh wrong. You like, damn, I should have. I knew I should have done that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, there you, you go. That shit is the worst. Is when you <laughs> bro, did something wrong you know, and something bad happened, you, you just know. damn, I knew I shouldn't have done it. Yeah. You know? it's like when you grill your kids and like everybody else is like, why are you so? Because I know this motherfucker did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he knows what he did. You know what I'm saying? I just man, look, man, I just it was just some shit. I had to shake up off, man, because it just went like this is just, this is just insane, bro. It's just so much easier and, and not easier, but <laughs> less things you have to worry about, more things you can just grow on a positive thought. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? mm-hmm. so. it's true, man. That's a that's a good point because I can think of so many times where, like, I take five steps forward and then I do something stupid. I'm now six steps backwards. Six, bro, and them yeah. six, them six ones hurt. They hurt every single way. I feel like you got to oh kick and God. drag backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things, you know, in the next in the next uh, episode we'll do with Parker. We'll talk depression. Yeah. I think that's a real topic that Talk men, what? I'm sorry? Depression. Depression. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's going to be one that, you know, again, he's a mental health advocate in a sense. He's went through his things. We talked a little bit with Stan and, and them yesterday, but I've got a, another group of men where you say, man, that's another space where I posted a video and some people messaged me on my even my 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 you know IG and I was like yo man thanks for saying something bro because you never know how someone's living and the goal is not to make their lives worse but when you are again trying to grow it's you know you hear it all the time you can't carry a bunch of dead weight so Whew. for one I mm. can't thank Parker enough for for and and Ma everybody chimed in this time this is this right here is a good episode it's got a good pulse but you look at you know the people that you want in your life where do you want to go how do you want to grow who has to go. Depression or depression, man. Who yeah, has the, to go? Who like has that. to mm-hmm. go so you can grow? And everyone here takes a little bit of pressure off of everyone. And I love even the opportunities podcasts providing to connect more people to more things. Yeah. And mind you, I told you I hated podcasts. I never, I didn't own the stuff. So the beauty about owning the 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 technology, in a sense, is like I don't ever have to stop now. Because when we just stopped working with that one guy, we're like, yo, we need everything back. I was like, bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now. We're sitting here learning. Uh, I've shared a lot of truths. We're going to get to some more truths. Hopefully, you guys learn to apply some of this right here and and leverage it. Like, none of us are where we need to be. But part of what I love is eventually, Sparker talked about doing a podcast himself or hanging out with us, is how do I keep showing you why this guy's interesting? 
if you're watching because of the dog page, we, we I know why you, you you're watching because you're like this motherfucker's crazy and he's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I've told <clears throat> Maul, you gotta post more because now they're I mean I let him listen to the video. They're like, yo, grab that Maul. I want to see him in more stuff. Mm -hmm. And and you know I fussed at Jamarcus about making sure his brand has an identity and and how he's gonna lean into communicating effectively about you know people taking something and and sharing it on because he said it. You know, as he's experiencing this whole thing, potentially getting out of hand. And these are the things that people miss when they were building what? Facebook, Apple, yeah. uh, Google, Amazon. Imagine if you could go back and see day one to day 100 and you were there for a part of the, like that whole journey. Yeah. Like, be, that's a blueprint, people. We live in a digital era. That blueprint for building Amazon, you'll never do it twice. But still... <laughs> But, but still, just watching the story could provide some motivation that you didn't have to go out and at least try. Yeah. yeah. It's my best advice is always to try. So we're on the Unmotivated Podcast. Clearly, everybody here is relatively motivated. <laughs> and, and we're going to keep this show rolling. Um, again, this right here, I think, which is highlighted values, friendship, leaning into the things that you, you, you want to learn from, um, removing the things that need to go so you can grow. Mm -hmm. And as always, people, thank you for listening and, and good luck. Boom.